Hi, I'm Prabhash and you are watching Engineer Suite. In this video, we'll solve the important multiple choice questions from the chapter Precipitation. We have nearly covered half of the subject and I thought that let us revise the chapter Precipitation with some important multiple choice questions. So each question, the time interval will be 5 seconds. In that 5 seconds, you have to answer the question or else you can pause the video, answer the question yourself, then you can replay the video. So, here is our first question. So, the question is about cyclonic precipitation. In cyclonic precipitation, what happens? Air mass moves up. And what happens? The clouds which are present moves up due to low pressure. I have detailed discussed about cyclonic precipitation in my precipitation quick revision video. So the cyclonic precipitation is caused by lifting of an air mass due to pressure difference. So, the answer will be A. So, the cyclone normally occurs in low pressure regions. And the wind will be anticlockwise. So the option will be, correct option will be B. If he would have asked about anticyclone, then the option will be C. So try the next question. So there should be no obstructions surrounding to the rain gauge stations while placing. So a rain gauge should preferably be fixed in an open space. So the option is C. So in this question, he has asked about additional number of rain gauge stations. So we know the number of rain gauge stations n equal to Cb by E whole square, where Cb is coefficient of variation and E is permissible error. So in this question, Cb is given as 30% 30, 30 and the error he has given as 10% 10, 10 whole square equal to this will be 3 square equal to 9 so I require 9 number of rain gauge stations but I already have 4 rain gauge stations already 4 rain gauge stations are present So what will be the additional rain gauge station? That will be this 9 minus 4 equal to 5. So the correct option will be option C. So try the next question. So in this question what he has told there is a catchment area and in the same catchment area there are three zones there are three zones one is X one is Y and one is Z so X represent flat or tropical zone X is flat zone Y represent mountain And Z represent a right zone. A right zone means the zone in which there will be very less rainfall. So the number of desirable rain gauge stations. So this is NX, this is NY and this is NJ. 
so in this question he has asked us to derive a relation between the three always remember in mountain region we require high num high number of rain gauge stations so ny will be high then we require number of rain gauge stations in flat region that will be nx arid zone means very less rainfall less rainfall means we require less number of rain gauge station so the correct relation is ny greater than nx greater than nz so the option which is correct ny greater than nx greater than nz that is option c No matter how many rain gauge stations are there in a catchment, at least 10% of the rain gauge will be recording type of rain gauge stations will be. So the option is B. So what does this statement means? If in a catchment I have 10 number of rain gauge stations, out of 10 number of rain gauge stations, at least 10%, 10% should be recording type of rain gauge stations means out of these 10 rain gauge stations at least i require one number of rain gauge stations of recording type this statement means that and the option is b So the Simon's rain gauge is a non-recording type of rain gauge. So the option is B. The other three are recording type of rain gauges. So we generally use tipping bucket type rain gauges in hilly or inaccessible areas. So the option A and the answer is tipping bucket type rain gauges. So in India, natural siphon type rain gauge station is adopted. So the option is C and the answer is natural siphon type. So we require one rain gauge stations for 520 kilometer square. So in this question, he has asked for 5000 200 kilometer square we require 5200 divided by 520 the answer will be 10 number of rain gauge stations so the option is a i have detailed discussed about this chapter in my second video in the quick revision of precipitation so if you haven't watched that you can go and watch that so the option is a So the optimum number of rain gauge stations means the number of rain gauge stations we require n equal to cb by e whole square. So the option is option c. So the coefficient of variation coefficient of variation cb equal to sigma by pa into 100. So what is sigma? Sigma is the standard deviation and PA. PA means arithmetic average of mean precipitation values. So, so the option is standard deviation by mean into 100 and the option A. So variability of rainfall is. So variations will be there where I got the less rainfall. So in the option C, largest in regions of scanty rainfall. The meaning of scanty means less. So variations will be there where I got the less rainfall. So the option is C. Only three. So the option is C. So this question belongs to calculation of missing rainfall data and in our previous video we have detailed explained how to calculate a missing rainfall data and we had solved a gate question also. So the question state that the normal annual precipitation 
at stations X, A, B and C are. So this is 700 mm. N A 1000 mm. N B 900 mm. And N C that is 800 mm. Then the storm precipitation at three stations A, B and C he has given that is P A he has given as 100 P B he has given as 90 and P C he has given as 80 mm and he has asked us to find the precipitation values at station X means px he has find so what was the formula px by nx equal to 1 by n that is p1 by n1 plus p2 by n2 plus p3 by n3 so i have taken a as 1 b as 2 and c as and px he has asked us to find px nx what is nx nx is 700 equal to 1 by n what was small n small n was whose both p and n values are known so here both p and n values are known so small n equal to 3 so this is 3 what is p1 p1 is 100 P1 is 100 divided by N1 is 1000 plus P2 is 90 divided by 900 plus P3 is 80 divided by 800. So in uh, public sector exams or any engineering service exam or any PACs like OPSE or APPSE or any RPSA exam calculators are not allowed. So you have to solve it yourself. So this 700 goes other side 700 by 3 so 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 this will be 700 by 3 into 3 by 10 so the answer is 70 and 70 mm the option is A. I hope you would have understand the things. If you haven't understand, then I recommend you go and watch that video. I have made it calculation of missing rainfall data and you can watch the get questions also. It will help you. So what is mass curve? Mass curve is a graph between cumulative depth of rainfall and time. So the mass curve is the graphical representation of accumulated rainfall and time. What is accumulated? Same as cumulative. So this is option C. So, heterograph is a graphical representation of what is heterograph? Heterograph is a graph between intensity of rainfall with respect to time. So, rainfall intensity and time. So, the option is A. So, option A. So, what is double mass curve basically? Double mass curve, it's a graph between cumulative depth of rainfall with respect to cumulative depth of rainfall. So, generally, we use double mass curve to check the consistency of the rainfall. So, double mass curve is adopted to check the consistency of data. So, the option C is correct. So, what is double mass curve? It's a graph between cumulative depth of rainfall in the x-axis with respect to cumulative depth of rainfall in y-axis. In detail, it's not required. So, DAD analysis. What do you mean by DAD analysis? DAD means 
depth area duration analysis so what we what we generally do in dad analysis we plot a graph and we take depth in the y axis and the area in the x axis and we try to generate a relation between depth and area with respect to duration so we generally plot the duration in the graph and what happens with respect to duration the depth increases so the depth increases with the increase in the duration so the option is b and the option b said that for a given area the maximum average depth of rainfall increases with storm duration so with respect to the storm duration the depth generally increases so the option b So in this question he has asked us about weighted mean in which method we take weighted mean in thiessen polygon method we take weighted mean and what is that p a equal to p1 a1 plus p2 a2 plus p3 a3 plus so on divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus so on so summation of p a divided by summation of a so the option is option c so the question state that the area between the isohydes so this is the isohyd this is one isohyd and this is one isohyd so the area between the isohydes of 45 cm this one is 45 and this one is 55 so the area bet between two isohydes is 100 square km square and the between 55 and 65 the area is 150 km square and the whole catchment area is of 250 km square and he has asked us to find average annual precipitation so what is average p average equal to p1 plus p2 by 2 into a1 plus this is isohydal method p2 plus p3 by 2 into a2 divided by a1 plus a2 so what is p1 p1 is 45 plus p2 is 55 divided by 2 into a1 is 100 plus what is p2 is 55 plus 65 divided by 2 into 150 divided by 100 plus 150 so if you solve this question you will get 56 cm so this was the question from isohydal method so the answer is 56 option c so we know probability p equal to 1 by return period that is 1 by t so p t equal to 1 so the option a is correct so we have discussed the important questions from the chapter precipitation i hope you have enjoyed this video thanks for watching this video please subscribe share with your friends and don't forget to like this video we'll meet in our next video thanks for watching